Hey guys, and welcome to the Improvement Season podcast. Whatever you want to put at the end. <laughs> and with me, <laughs> Pascal Floor, and my buddy on the other end, Steve Hall. Um, so today, we are going to talk about a thing that we've discovered over the week and we've already talked about in private because we see it with so many people and also especially in our community in this science-based community if you want to call it that but also in general in fitness and outside of life uh, in general the peer pressure of following specific things following trends and falling into the trap of wanting those kind of outcomes as well, or following that kind of specific thing as well. Um, Steve, where do we want to touch on first? We wanted to first and foremost do a small recap of our weeks, right? So, yeah, I mean, this is very much open to what the listeners want but what we were thinking for this podcast for the improvement season podcast is to for me and pascal to give like a 15 minute overview of how we're getting on right now and if anything cool's happened um just give you a bit of an insight into what we're doing um and then go into a topic or some questions from you guys so if you're cool with that that's how we're going to structure it this week hopefully get some good feedback you can give us because we just want to give you what you want really um and so yeah let's go over a bit of a recap of i guess the last week for you pascal because i know you've been dealing with some injuries it's kind of been throwing <laughs> off your improvement season quite a lot right now. Oh, yeah, man. Hey. Oh, I mean, 2017 wasn't the best year in terms of health. And also, I mean, this then translated over to training and the nutritional aspect. And I'm at the point where I simply can laugh about it because it's so absurd. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, like two or three weeks ago, I thought that I pulled some kind of muscle in my back because it's spread across the entire left section of my back. So uh, I was already afraid that it's some kind of herniated disc, went to a doctor, they prescribed me some medicine, physiotherapy, all that kind of stuff. And like yesterday was the time then when I scratched a specific spot on the left side of my body. And immediately, I really experienced that super sharp and stabbing pain, which then caused the entire back to flare up. And I was just like, okay, this must be the cause for what is actually going on. And back in 2014 and 2015, uh, both years, I had a, a broken rib on the left side because of squatting. <laughs> and it is again the left side and it feels really similar to what I've experienced in the past. So, and it's really just one specific spot on the left side and when I, as soon as I touch it, it really just gives me that super sharp, intense pain that spreads across the entire left side of my back. Um, and that kind of keeps me off of training properly I say properly because I'm still training. I'm still working around the nagging injury. Um, I'm doing lots of push movements, uh, focusing more on chest, um, building my arms, triceps ex extensions and the curls for the girls, of course, and, and trying to do all the leg movements I still can do. So it's more isolation work. But for, for right now, it's just about maintenance volume to, because I know I can't really make any kind of improvements right now. I mean, not massively, um, because I want to give my body the rest it needs to actually have the ha have the capacity to build some new tissue around that uh, specific area and also really let it heal, right? Because if I now try to overreach specific body parts, it takes away the, the recovery capabilities for that specific area. So I, I keep it at minimum volume just to maintain my, my physique right now. That's about it, actually. I guess, yeah, I've said it before. I think in my, 
I might have even said a Facebook post, said a Facebook post, written a Facebook post this week where it was kind of like with every positive, there has to be a negative or every kind of if you want to spend, you have to have a cost. There's always a cost involved. So if you want your rib to heal properly, then the cost is you can't go and overreach other body parts. Or if you want to overreach other body parts, then your rib's going to take a back seat and won't yeah. heal as fast. Um, that really not, sucks. Not, not only as fast, but perhaps not properly yeah. enough, right? Because you're you're always moving your torso as well. And it could potentially be that it's then getting out of position at some times. I, 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 I'm not really uh, like well knowledge how it comes to bone health and how the healing process of bone tissue actually is taking place. Um, so I could potentially see a risk of it not healing properly during the whole process and then being a little bit fragile yeah. at the end. So I'd rather take now a little bit, uh, uh, two steps back to then push it harder again in the future. It sucks, as you mentioned already, but I mean, let's hear about your past uh week so this is i think i'm now four weeks post show yeah it'll be well four weeks today was my last show so that time flies yeah what the hell's even happened so i'm now i had my heaviest weigh-ins i think yesterday and today since my show and i'm hovering uh, uh, like just below 170 basically uh which is just around five pounds just under five pounds above like stage weight actually mm -hmm. um and I haven't increased my calories. My calories have been three six hundred basically for the last two weeks. Um, and my cardio, all I did to my cardio is basically cut out my PM cardio that I was doing. It was only fifty calories a time. It's not anything really very much. <laughs> um, but it, it's nice not having to even think about that. And now I'm basically not doing any cardio. Um, I do some to warm up before my first main session, but it's nothing. Um, and then mm -hmm. I've just kept my activity up via my steps. And I think that's how I'll do it during my off season, kind of just warm up cardio and then just step count. Uh, I don't really, I don't see a major benefit in doing more than that. Um, I think kind of as little as you can get away with is almost probably the best thing. Like we said, there's always a cost. So if I ended up piling in a bunch of lists, even if it was lists or medium intensity cardio, it's going to take away from, well, time that could be put towards hypertrophy training. And as we've discussed, some body parts, and I'm finding out some of my body parts can take lots of volume, um, which I prefer to put towards that that's much more specific to my goal as a bodybuilder. So yeah, that's the only changes that have happened. Um, I'm actually the last, probably the last week I've been feeling a lot better. Um, I had some digestive is issues last week and I believe, and I actually listened to the 3DMJ podcast recently where they were talking about after the recovery diet and like signs that you're recovered. Um, and one of those signs that you're recovered is like your digestion's back to normal because they said often when you introduce a lot more food into the system and more variety, your digestion gets a bit wacky. And I think that's what was happening to me. I started eating out um, at different different foods that I hadn't been having. I started having higher amounts of food. And so I think my digestion was just like, wait, we haven't even produced this gut flora to like digest all of this stuff mm. right now. So I think that's all sorted itself out. I haven't had any issues the last kind of few days. It wasn't awful. It was just kind of an upset stomach and yeah, just wasn't the best. And then my sleep the last week has improved a ton. Um, even cool. though I'm in my like fourth week of training where it's really hard, I'm still actually sleeping better. I'm not waking up in the middle of the night as much. Um, I was waking up a lot. So I think that's a good sign as well. Um, and like just other signs, like I can feel my libidos kind of coming back. My energy levels are much higher. People in the gym are telling me like, you're full of energy now. Like, And I can tell even on this podcast, like when we talk, I've just, got, just, I've got that energy and I can I can see it also in my physique like my physique got a bit softer I think bigger I can definitely like I've had comments uh, I, I like someone made my day yesterday on Instagram they said your abs are looking thicker and I was just like oh that like that means so much because I've been pounding them with volume um, and focusing on them a lot and I definitely think my back's looking bigger and things so I think everything's going really well and I'm really happy with how things have gone um, because it's a bit of a tricky time for me, someone who ha has, and I think a lot of people, they're kind of like, 
they want the recovery diet because they're like, yes, I want that kind of recovery aspect, but really they want to do the reverse because they're like, yeah, I just want to eke out as much as I can time. And um, well, I think I forget who uh, it was on the podcast from Eric Helms. A quote that stuck in my mind was um, he said, uh, you want to make muscle gains. So you want to get to a point in which you can make proper progress. You don't want to make Pop-Tart gains. It was like, what did you do in your off season? I added two Pop-Tarts to my diet because I managed to somehow get my metabolism to burn this many calories and stay lean. Um, it's like, well, you don't really, you want to say like you added 40 kilos to your squat. Like that is a, maybe a lot better, uh, like for your 10 rep max or well, 40 kilos would be a sh shit ton to add to a 10 rep max. <laughs> regardless, um, it was just a quote that stuck in my mind. I was like, I just have to keep these, keep being accountable to people on Instagram are helping. I'm chucking on my scale weight and talking about things on there and people are giving me feedback. That's nice. Pascal as well, keep me accountable. So yeah, it's just more of the same for me. Um, I've got another week. I'm doing a five to one accumulation to deload, which is a new one for me but i imagined because i was kind of coming out of the gates with a lot more food more food than normal like a bigger surplus than normal i think i can i think i can squeeze out a fifth week um and then i'll be deloading and probably doing a short about of maintenance as i can so maybe i put it'll probably be a, a three-week mesocycle with a deload either side um at which i will kind of hold um my body weight as best i can a bit kind of around like the low 170s hold at maintenance i think that'll be a good like just stabilization time for myself and then get into maybe a slightly less aggressive surplus um mm -hmm. depending on how things are going but i definitely even if i'm not feeling if i'm not feeling recovered enough during that time i will still dial back my training but i might let myself just be in a slight surplus and that might well just be fat gain but it's better to have had that and feel better and feel recovered than to push harder and the reason for the lower volume phase just so listeners know um is because my training volume is basically at a point at which is going to be very unsustainable and i can't progressively overload from it so i need to dial it back and let things resensitize let things recover um so yeah that's where i am at cool sounds awesome and also i really like the point you've made about being specific about structuring everything. So you mentioned the cardio aspect that you are reducing it uh, because there's really no need for you to keep it in anymore because you want to be specific in terms of building muscle mass. And if it might interfere with your progress, I mean, why then keep it in, right? But um, on the other hand, I would like to point out that I actually taper it off with uh, some of my clients as well so and you probably do so too that it's as we've talked about in the last podcast episode uh, when it comes to the nutritional aspect and tapering and changing things transitioning over to a different phase it's the same uh, with uh, the cardio aspect that when you did cardio like twice or three times in a week come well, even five times with some people unfortunately out there um the poor souls who have to do that or to get daily. stage ready or daily yes um uh, you want to taper it down you, know? you don't want to just drop it all along and as a general rule i always cut it by half and then decrease it over the next weeks and also this could potentially help you then eating a little bit more food throughout the next weeks yeah i mean it, that's exactly what it is when it's the only reason a bodybuilder really does cardio is maybe a little bit for just general health um and kind of that aspect and work capacity although i think people don't realize that the gym is also cardio because if you're using your heart that's cardiovascular work it just is um so if you're able to do what you need to do in the gym if it's not limiting you squatting and stuff then well you don't need to work on your cardiovascular system you just no. need to keep training um and so yeah i mean the only reason we use cardio really is uh if you enjoy it i guess that's an adherence thing but then it's just energy balance it's just burning off energy Whereas you could be putting that energy towards other things. And if you're recovered, kind of if you haven't got that need for it, like there's no people, 
if, if you're holding on to your cardio because it's letting you eat more in your off season, then you're not eating enough in your off season or you're not recovered from your dieting phase because you should get to a point at which the amount of calories you're eating is comfortable because your body is happy and it's not sending out certain kind of hunger signals because it's in a healthy state. So mm-hmm. yeah, just, I think that was a good roundup. Yeah, totally. Let's get to the actual topic here Woo. today. Woo-hoo-hoo. And yeah, rant on the people who are following trends. No, of course yeah. not. <laughs> you you guys know us. We are really polite and uh, open for new suggestions and yeah, all those kind of things. So uh, I'm, I'm rambling again, going off tangent here. No, we wanted to talk about actually, um, or do you want... Because you you reached out to me yesterday, no, two days ago, uh, in terms of calorie cycling, macro cycling, and specifically when it comes to the carbs, um, because we get this question all the time about is there or are there some benefits in cycling your carbs, doing putting them on your training days going higher in fats on your on your rest days perhaps and then we thought of that there are different kind of trends throughout the time uh, that always catches up and always people are following right um, we don't want to talk about specifically about one specific trend but more so about the overall idea of how they actually come up and why people are then falling into the trap actually of, of following those kind of I don't want to call them fats, but sometimes they actually are. Right? I mean, when it comes to carb cycling, for example, it is a tool that can be used and can be useful, such as also something like intermittent fasting, for example. Um, but Which sometimes do you think so? I think well I think these things come in like circles, basically. Like you see low fat come in now and then, then you see like high carb come in now and then, and then you see intermittent fasting comes in and people are like, oh, that's the new best thing. And then you see like high, whatever it might be, there's always something new kind of coming Mm in. Um, I think there's stuff that comes in the evidence-based scene. I think there's like a whole different, like in the general pop scene where you have like, oh, it's, what's it? Like five, two diet. And then you have like, obviously atkins we all know about and i don't know those ones so much but there's like there's really bad ones whereas even in the evidence-based crowd there's like yeah like you said calorie cycling like we've known about calorie cycling and having higher and lower days and all these things like refeeding i think was even probably a bit of a a fad in way and i don't know if a fad i'd have to look up what that actually stood for as a term is the right thing but i think when you talk, say fad, people kind of get it. And I think something like, I don't know, if we think about, you see it in training, DUP, I think that was a bit of a fad. I think people didn't really understand it. I think they just thought, oh, now I can do strength and hypertrophy in the same week. I'm just going to do this. I think power building became a bit of a fad, a thing that people wanted to follow. And like, it just became the next cool thing. I think even stuff down to oh, um, knee sleeves or like a lever belt. Like you see fads just coming in and then going and coming in and going. And I know I've been caught by some of them. Um, and We I, all are, I yeah, think, to some extent. Because sometimes it, it just sounds amazing and you don't really think about it too much. It's just you take it for granted and think that there's something to it because – specific people are following it this is where i think that most people are actually or why most people are actually following some kind of fad or some kind of trend let's call it trend because a fad in my my uh, understanding is something that is based on just ideas but there's no real truth behind it yeah, and they are just fine. trying to sell you something. Um, and I, I would rather stick with a trend because I think that all of those kind of concepts and methods have their place. But sometimes it is kind of people following those kind of trends as a religion. They also get offended by it when you prove them wrong or prove that they that there are other options to it 
right? And I see it with so many people that they then, because I mean, when we take a look at nutrition, for example, uh, eating and following a specific concept is kind of a, an intimate thing, right? You're putting something into your body and uh, this you do on a daily basis. So if you're then following a specific concept for a couple of weeks or even months or even years, and then other people show you some kind of studies, literature, research, or anecdotal evidence that there are other options out there, I can understand why people get offended by it. But I mean, uh, following something, it, it doesn't really matter what it is, if it's only uh, wearing the knee sleeves or following a specific diet. Being stuck in that tunnel of vision is, thing I think, the most kind of dangerous thing as well. Because this could then translate to other aspects in your life as well. Because it's kind of like a religion to you. Yeah, I think there's that dogma which can become a problem. Um, I've definitely seen this with intermittent fasting, for example. Like People are like religious with it. Like They think it is the best thing for your health. It is the best thing for your life. It is the best thing. Like, and you can still get as good muscular gains and things like this. And when you tell them... No, but like it's almost pretty much fact that you're not going to get as optimal muscle growth if you just eat all of your food in one sitting. It's like that's probably a, a, a decent su summarization and they get very upset by it. But then you'll get the other side of the coin where you'll see people who are open to trying new things and almost too open to the fact that they end up jumping around and questioning what they're doing. Um, and I know we have clients who are... I wouldn't say they're this type of person or they might have been, maybe they were that type of person. And that's why they've come for coaching because they want someone who they can rely on to help them diagnose these situations and whether it's something worth trying. Because I've certainly had clients who have picked out things and trends in the social media um, where they're like, should I be doing this or this or this? Um, what is this person? Why are they saying this? Um, and then I have to, and as I should, and as I enjoy as a coach, diagnose that trend and tell them whether it's something they should worth, be worth trying or whether, and often is the case, is what you're doing working? Are you enjoying and adhering to what you're doing? Why would you then jump ship and break whatever your good kind of the snowball that's rolling and getting bigger in your momentum? Why would you break that and try something different? Um, yeah, it, it upsets me when I, I, I don't, I mean, actually it doesn't ever happen with clients where they jump ship. Uh, and want to try something completely different but it, it does upset me when i see people just default do that all the time and this is like program hopping it's a very similar thing where people don't ever kind of stick with one thing long enough and they just keep jumping around and it's kind of like if i was to put an analogy to it it's like sl like just sleeping with loads of girls and never actually investing in one having a girlfriend having a family and developing a beautiful life um, it's like, right, yeah, jumping around's cool. It's not really very clever. You're not actually going to get anywhere in your like relationship goals. Um, so yeah, that's something I've definitely seen. What do you think? What's the cause for those kind of trends creeping up every single time? And that there's, you mentioned it already, that there's some kind of cycle. And it's funny because we can see it with different things in life as well. For example, the 70s or 80s, uh, the re retro trend is coming back and all those kind of things. It's always a cycle and everyone is thinking that they are uh, inventing something new and they aren't actually, right? Um, and wh why do you think that those kind of trends always creep up every once in a while? I definitely think it's down to the fact that we're all, all of us, and this is a great thing, are invested in our own progress and we want the best progress and so we're always always keeping our eye open for the next best thing or something mm -hmm. that could positively influence our progress so if we and then i think sometimes what happens is you see someone who you respect or they have a good physique and they're doing something one of these trends and getting good progress so you're like why aren't i doing that if they're like, they've got a physique I aspire to, if they're getting great progress, then surely what they're doing is what I should be doing. But then when you put your logical hat back on, you think, right, 
someone like Ronnie Coleman was fucking jacked and strong. I'm not doing everything he's doing because I am not Ronnie Coleman. And this is where you have to, again, as coaches, I think this is something we do all the time and like sit, take our clients back and be like, just draw yourself back, take a bird's eye view and think about what you've said really like thoroughly through. Um, I think that's why it pops up. I think it's, it's just human nature. We're always looking for the next best and hoping for it. And so as different people pop up and they're doing different things, it kind of circulates. And do you also think that um, that it's more so egoistically driven or because there's some kind of community around those kind of trends that someone actually wants to be a part of something? Because I know that you, you mentioned human nature there and I've, I know that um, for human, or I desire it is always to be a part of a bigger community and be a bigger part of sp- yeah, to have people around you who care about you and you care about them, right? And do you think that this is more so the reason for following a trend to be a part of a community, a specific community? I definitely think that's part of it. And um, you actually had a brilliant analogy, I think, before we even came on air, where you were talking about like the, the cool <laughs> kids at school who have got like they the new trainers like they've got and i i said the nike airs we all know what nike airs are not that i don't think i've ever owned a pair of nike airs i'm not sure i was never a cool kid but like they've got their nike airs and so you're like hounding your mum to give you money for these nike airs you're like i want to be part of the crew that have all got the cool trainers on um i think it's just the same way with with the community within the fitness industry you see people doing i don't know it might be 531 for a period of time that was like i i did 531 because matt ogus was doing 531 and then everyone <laughs> was doing 531 and it was like what I, why am i doing 531 because matt ogus is doing it that's not why you should be doing 531 you should be doing 531 because you're looking at what the results that program is going to provide you so i think people see someone they aspire to doing something and then that creates like a bit of a, a cool crowd and you even see it down to the fact that and I see myself as a tiny influencer, but if I, I do like hashtag massive salad and then I see people when they're like, they're having their massive salads, they're kind of hashtagging it. And I love it. Like I like that community aspect. And I don't think that's, I think there can be negative trends. I don't think that's at all a negative trend. It's getting people to eat more vegetables, but I think that could happen in other aspects where it could become a negative trend because you could get someone being like, I don't know, clean eating Dave who then hashtags all of his foods like clean foods, like hashtag gluten-free, hashtag dairy-free, hashtag fun-free. And then everyone's copying him and they're like having their hashtag fun-free meals and they're then not enjoying their diet and they're getting a bit of an East disordered way of eating because they aspire to be like Dave and they think they have to eat like him. And then they're, they're missing their goals and what they actually want to be doing because they're just wanting to be part of that crowd. Totally. Now that you've mentioned it, um, and I'm now going back to what you said earlier about the people always looking for the best outcome for themselves. But I, I, I doubt that to some extent, because I think that sometimes people follow trends or do specific things because they are hoping to get some kind of confirmation from other people. Yeah, And we can see it with so many, when we just focus on the fitness industry now. Um, I think like three or four years, it was really, it really became popular to be a power lifter, right? And then all of a sudden, it now I had the feeling that it, like two years ago, it became really popular to be a natural bodybuilder. Um, and then there was in between like being a power builder, <laughs> like all those kind of things. And I, I fear that for some people, they are always looking for the place for them to be in, but they are never satisfied with where they're at because it's not really what they want to, to be in or it's not really for them, but they think they need to actually follow a specific thing to be a part of a bigger community. And unfortunately, that's not 
the best thing I think when it comes to strength training, when it comes to bodybuilding, because it is a long-term sport. You will only see the best results like when you put in decades of work. And for the people who are then only looking for the short-term gratification and short-term satisfaction, it's never really satisfying for them. And then the, it, it becomes like this trend hopping or program hopping or sport hopping, like always trying to find out what it, is it actually you like and you enjoy. And there's nothing wrong with that because, I mean, we are all looking – for what we actually like and enjoy in our lives. I did it for for a couple of years where I always felt like I don't belong somewhere and I was always looking for that specific place where where I feel like there are like-minded people around me who think like me, who kind of act like me, who have the same interests, all those kind of things. And I was looking for ages actually. Right. And I always felt lost. And I definitely see those kind of people in the industry as well, because fitness grew over the last 10 years, like massively. And I think there are a lot of people out there who don't really enjoy bodybuilding or strength sports in general, but they are doing it because they want to be a part of a community. And it all sounds so negative and I don't want it to sound that negative because it isn't because it could potentially lead people into a community and actually find out that they are enjoying that kind of lifestyle. But I also, on the other hand, I see the, the, the potential risk of them being stuck in that cycle where they can't really go out anymore because they are only working or moving in that specific area of strength sports. And they think that they want to be a strength athlete or something, but actually they would be better off to go traveling or something. Yeah. No, I think you made a tremendous point in that. It does sound very negative what we're talking about. And I think, there certainly can be negative aspects that we've touched on, but there can be tremendous positive ones as well. It's like there's positive and negative communities in our environment. Like even actually, if we bring it back to school, you'll have, there's crowds within school that are not positive, that are not good. And you hear about these kids who maybe manage to get away from that negative crowd, or they talk about how they were a bad, bad boy or bad girl at school um, and didn't get the most out of their education because they surrounded themselves by negative people that did things they thought they had to do to be part of that crew. And they thought that was what they enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Whereas in actual fact, when they were themselves, when they embraced who they are and joined a good crowd of people who were also kind of, I don't know, maybe they were smart kids who wanted to pursue a career in future. And then they, they went with them and then they were like, Oh, actually like, I actually really like these people. They're really like pushing forward and trying to be positive and great. And I like to think a community like ours, like team revive, I think it, it's a really positive community. We're very open um, to new ideas. We're trying to take, we're not dogmatic in any way. And like we're, we help and push each other forward. And that's, I mean, that's our actual slogan is revive stronger. We're always trying to strive to get better. Whereas I think there are some communities in the fitness industry that are like, just they, they do stuff that to their own detriment, like the, the like dogmatic clean eating, for example, I guess would be one where they are not embracing flexible dieting. They don't embrace trying new foods. Even I think to the degree that you have those dogmatic clean eaters and then you have like dogmatic bro eaters who are like, hardcore outwork you have to be in the gym like crushing it every time you have to eat your chicken rice and broccoli meals and i think really if you mix like elements of everyone you get kind of a nice mix and you find a, a somewhere in the middle and the middle is always generally the place you want to be um for the the most prosperity and i think when people get too far to the left too far to the right that's where problems occur um this is almost sounding political now <laughs> Yeah, but I, you've brought up some amazing points there. And I think that uh, sometimes people get too emotional in the entire thing that, again, we've talked about it of being offended. And I can 
definitely understand it to some extent when you are investing yeah. so much time and effort into something and then someone else is coming along and saying that you are full of shit or all you're doing over the past years was just a waste of time of course you get offended right because it, it your flaw kind of flaws and mistakes are presented right in front of you and no one likes that no one likes that and i definitely can agree that or understand that people then get offended and try to um try to defend themselves in that situation and then this communication and the discussion they have isn't constructive anymore no. and doesn't doesn't lead to a productive outcome where both sides perhaps meet in the middle and agree with each other or disagree with each other and then go both their separate ways. And I can see with so many, as you pointed out, the dogmatic views some people have that they, and it's, it's funny because they say it so often, I feel like, yeah, it's, it's fine that you feel like it, but take other people's view into perspective as well and also keep literature for example in perspective as well only because you feel better not eating gluten doesn't mean that uh, gluten is the devil for example or um, there are people shouldn't eat something with gluten or anything like that right the emotional aspect to something is something quite different to having an open mind about something it's funny, you, I, I've just thought of a, a new trend, like trends you see. You see exercises becoming trendy, like the seal row, for example. You saw that come in and that became really trendy <laughs> for people to do. Um, and I think that's great. And I think like the Bayesian curl, for example, or Alberto curl, or whatever it might be, um, like now you might see trends of people focusing more on lifting heavy shit and then you'll see trends of people focusing more on the contraction and the, I think they're great trends because I think they make you assess what you're doing and whether that new trend or that new thing is something worth implementing I think if if you have that mindset they're very beneficial if you have the mindset that what I'm doing is crap I'm going to jump ship and go to this that's terrible <laughs> that's going to lead to the wrong things to happen but if you pick and choose what you, suits you that's great those trends are really good it's i mean you can put put it down to food fashion anything when something like where the grenade carb killers you you love your the original caramel crunch one that one I, i've probably got the name wrong but that one's really good but they and bring out, bars are shit. <laughs> yeah um and they bring out a new flavor and you're like oh, am i gonna just chuck my caramel one away and never eat that again and i have to have the new peanut butter nutter one and it's like <laughs> no maybe I'll, ch I'll i'll buy a sample of that and uh, i'll buy a box of the ones i normally like and then if that sample's good maybe i'll buy two boxes of one of each because both are good and it's like with your training okay i'm doing a bent over barbell row these are really good i'm getting lots of good work with them oh seal rows look good don't go and just drop your bent over barbell row maybe implement a bit of seal rows into your mesocycle next time, see how they go, see how you progress with that. And maybe that'll be a good movement for you. Don't just completely jump ship from what you, you've been doing and what's working for you. And I think this comes back to this podcast as a theme, the improvement podcast, the improvement season, in that in, the, in your improvement season, you will get tempted to jump ship. You'll get tempted to try something new. Like mini cuts, I think when I, I and it's probably part of my fault, I popularized those to an extent. People heard about them, they're like, oh, fast fat loss helps my muscle gaining in future. I must just drop my gaining phase now and do a mini cut. It's like, no, 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 no. Assess like whether <laughs> it's worth doing. Like actually just, ha just take a step back when you see these trends come out, really come back, look at the principles, Look at the, the scientific principles of strength training and hypertrophy and nutrition and all of that. Assess what this new trend is and whether it's worth implementing and then try it. Um, and I think that's something we help our clients do um, and we do it for ourselves uh, because we often try stuff before giving it to our clients, which is a nice little thing that we do. Um, yeah, I think I went on enough of a ramble there. No, but I totally agree and I think that this was important to point out and also what we actually, the intention behind this podcast or this episode is really to make the listener 
and also ourselves aware of that we are falling for trends and we are falling for some kind of fads some every once in a while uh, but um always uh, again as you pointed out take one step away from it keep things in perspective consider if that might actually be beneficial for you and if it is perfect perfect implement it to some extent see how this can actually work together with something else in combination in combination with each other and then actually assess the outcomes of it and again i mean if you if you want to follow something like intermittent fasting because it suits your lifestyle it makes you feel better perhaps it's not the most optimal uh, when it comes to muscle gain on paper uh, and in theory but perhaps it is for you in that specific situation because only then you can commit to the entire process perfect follow that method implement it for you but all we want to do and all we want are trying to say is um, find what works for you and you n equals one so in scientific terms you are the only one who can tell if something's working for you or not and don't follow a trend because x y and z is actually telling you to do so or had amazing results because of that also correlation doesn't mean causation right and this is something people often tend to forget so really try to find your way find what works best for you and this is all we wanted to actually say with this podcast that's actually something um i think it's brilliant that you said is find your way um we don't have the revive stronger method we do not have the revive stronger program because we don't have like a one set way of doing things and this is like when people ask questions i'm like sometimes i do this with clients sometimes i do this with clients they're all tools to be used in our toolbox um and you have to find your way what works for you um and don't kind of just be a sheep avoid that sheep herd mentality is not going to pay off in the long term and um i i think we've rounded up this podcast really well and i just in my head i'm thinking damn pascal we need to be more like marmite like love us or hate us because we're way too middle ground i think <laughs> I, I think we, yeah, we we don't draw enough people in or push yeah, enough true. people away because we should be like nah intermittent fasting fuck that never do that it's awful for yeah. muscle gains should be the charles <laughs> manson of the fitness industry exactly but i think we've <laughs> given a good message and i think i think we've um there's enough people who are of the mindset of us that will appreciate what we've said here today um and as always and um, if you don't then fuck you go fuck yourself <laughs> yes <laughs> perfect at least this is how we were all annoyed anyway. some people although if they've listened this far <laughs> to the podcast i think they're on board <laughs> yeah, totally awesome cool. well i think we want to say a massive thank you all again for listening um again give us feedback in terms of if you, if you like the little intro about how our progress is going in our improvement season and then the slight topic that we are going to discuss um, if you have any questions in regards to this episode, let us know. And if you have any kind of further topics or questions for future episodes, let us know and we will get them done. Um, and I, as always, want to tell you, if you do have questions for other people from other episodes like Mike, everyone, join the free Facebook group. That's a community that is hopefully not dogmatic and uh, you can put questions in there and uh, we'll, me and Pascal will always be keeping an eye. So we will try and give you a, a, our perspective as well. Yeah, and while you mentioned the Facebook group, on the 3rd of December, we have a live Q&A once again with Broderick Chavez from The Evil Genius. And this is in that Facebook group. So if you're interested in taking part of it, um, asking some questions and being able to watch the live thing afterwards, then you have to join the group. And actually, not that I've spoken too much to Pascal, but there'll be more fun stuff happening in that group, um, some developments. Uh, he'll probably have some idea of what I'm talking about, but just that group's going to be fun. So if you, there is a, a trend 
or a fad that you want to come join. I mean, the team revive stronger group. That's the one place to be. Anyway, we'll leave it there because we're going yeah, cool. on for ramble. Uh, cheers, guys. Take care. Cheers.